thanks for watching. I'm Katie Horvath. I am here today with Brian Trothan. Brian is running for a seat in the 2018 Sarnia Municipal Election as a city councillor. Uh, thanks for coming out today, Brian. I'm glad to be here. All right. Um, so why don't we start, why don't you tell us and our viewers just a little bit about yourself? You know, a little biographical rundown? Yeah. Okay. Well, I am a retired teacher. I taught at Northern Collegiate for quite a number of years. Retired back around the turn of the century and uh, took some time off and did a few things that I was interested in doing for myself and one thing led to another and one day I got cranky about something that was going on at City Hall yeah. and my wife said to me, if you feel so darn upset about it, you need to do something. <laughs> right. And I said, okay, I'm going to. Right. And at that point she was totally flabbergasted as I was myself and yeah. uh, I pursued it and went down and talked to people and thought, okay, I will take the plunge, I will run for office. All right. And that was a great learning experience. I was as green as I could possibly be at that stage. Yeah. And uh, it was, it, I, I felt the campaign really strongly on an emotional level. Yeah. Can't tell you a thing about it now other than I did it, I survived, I felt really bad when I lost, right. and, and decided, hey, there's a lesson here, you need to learn. So what are the lessons that are available to you from this experience? And one of them was, people don't know who you are. You need to get out and be more social and be more involved in your community, right. and people will know you. And somebody said, if you talk to people, people will like you. And if they like you, they'll vote for you if you ever run again. Well, there you go. So I thought, well, this is a great apprenticeship. This is what I'm going to do. Excellent. So I broke out of my reserve and got involved with a lot of different organizations over the years and, and I've just pursued one thing after another ever since then. That's great. So that's at least a dozen years that I have been volunteering with various boards and uh, city committees and organizations all across Sarnia. That's great. And what are some of the boards that you've been volunteering I with? I started off uh, very quietly. I was a volunteer first at the uh, crisis line where people were calling in with problems and you know emerging situations mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of our client clients who we called on a regular basis were elderly people mm -hmm. who were alone and they just needed that check-in to say you know we know that you're out there how are you doing today right. and some people would often say I'm so glad you called I haven't spoken to anybody all day long mm -hmm. so there's tremendous number of very lonely elderly people in Sarnia. Mm -hmm. And that was rewarding for quite a while. I decided that it was time to move on from that experience. Uh, as I say, I ran for council. Then I joined, I was brought on to the planning committee. I thought that would be a good place to learn about property and how property is divided and shared out and the process of planning and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I also got involved with the Heritage Committee because that's always been a long time interest of mine. Mm -hmm. Served on both committees for a very long time and I believe that it's important that you don't stay with something too long. You need to say, okay, you've given your this much time to this organization. Mm -hmm. It's time for somebody else to come along to it and help out. I also became involved at the same time on the Board of Community Legal Assistance, okay. which is the agency which provides legal services for people living in poverty. Mm -hmm. And most of that work, uh, our board is a supervisory board, uh, and I stayed that with that for a number of years and moved up through the ranks and retired finally uh, as chair of that board. And then I had, to, there was a mandatory law that in the bylaws you can only serve so many terms and then you're out. Okay. So I served my full time and then I was out. Okay. And that was that was really very rewarding. I was also for a long time a uh, member of the board at the Lawrence House Center for the Arts. Okay. And that was a really dramatic occasion because at that time we were in crisis mm -hmm. and we were almost broke and there was a lot of dissension in the board and we didn't know how we were going to sustain the funding and mm -hmm. things got really really complicated okay. and that was a great experience too because sometimes you learn more from adversity than you do from a good time right right so that was a challenge and uh, we set a path that the, the incoming board followed more or less mm -hmm. and they've been able to be successful we we had money left over that we were able to, to provide them with mm -hmm. so they had a basis that they could keep on going. Oh, that's so I'm really, I was really pleased that we found a whole new group of people who were wanting to take on that job and keep that organization going. So that was really good. 
Wow, excellent. Yeah, lots of lots of involvement in the community. Yeah, the and I've been, yeah. I've been watching uh, council uh, up close for quite a long time. Okay. I go to almost every council meeting. Okay. I go, go up every week and get every week ahead of the meeting and get the full package of, the, of all the documents and the agenda. Mm -hmm. And man, is that sometimes challenging. Right. In the last meeting in July was over 700 pages of reading material. Yes, yes. I thought, I haven't got time for, for War and Peace again this, in my lifetime. <laughs> well, you've been doing your homework then. I have been. So that's good. Um, so this year, was there something specific that happened this year that made you want to run, or was it just a continuation of... Well, I would say it is, it's <clears throat> more of a continuation, but there's also the immediate situation that Council has found itself in over the last number of years. And uh, it's been very difficult uh, for council to move ahead. Uh, sometimes it seems as though personal relationships have been really fractured. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of, it, it seems as though there's been a lot of bad feeling among members of council. Mm -hmm. And whether this, whether this impairs what they do, I don't know. I think it creates a very unfortunate atmosphere and the public pay up on that more than they do on the, on the real substance of what's going on mm -hmm. and they're, they're concerned about it and I, I think that I am a very calm person mm -hmm. uh, when I was teaching I was told I was one of the most laid-back teachers that the kids ran into uh -huh. so I don't I, I think that was a compliment it's a like compliment for teenagers that's so I, I, I think that's my general demeanor that, that I am a calm person and I tend not to get drawn into personality conflict. Okay. Uh, in most, in many cases, in the organizations I I belong to, I have ended up in an executive position mm -hmm. because people, I think, people see that I am able to be rational and calm and logical in my approach to problems, right. and that I can bring people together to get things done. That's great. I was I was gonna ask you why you think you'd make a good representative, but I guess you've I guess you've answered that. <laughs> good. All right. Um, so we can go now into um, moving into the section where we'll talk a little bit more detail about the current council sure. and just kind of reflections of this last last term. Um, so I know you've touched on it a little bit, um, but just in general, could you make some more comments about how you felt they did for the 2014 to 2018 term? So in terms of some positives and maybe some things. That yeah, could have I would prefer on. not to, not to deal with it with the negative uh, because it's it's so it's so difficult to see from the outside. It is so difficult to see what's really going on in that in that interpersonal level. Mm -hmm. And that's fair. Yeah. So in terms of what was actually accomplished, council. And I I don't think this is exceptional. I think all the councils, wherever they might be in the community seem to move slowly. It takes a long time to get things done. Mm -hmm. I mean, there may be an initiative brought to council in the first year of a term and it doesn't get it doesn't get completed in a four year term. Mm, very true. It's, yeah. You lay basis, you hope that your policy will move forward, but there are all kinds of problems that get in the way of preventing things from being done as you would like them to be done. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard It's hard to make initiatives and it's hard to get them carried out. Mm -hmm. And it's just, a, it's just the natural order of things. It's not that there's any great impediment or there's horrible opposition to anything. It's just the facts of what the system is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so in terms of, we don't, and you, you said you don't want to get into the details of the negativity. Because I simply don't know. And, and that's fair. Um, so just in general, if conflicts do arise, how would you handle conflict? If there was um, a citizen, for example, that was angry about something on council, um, or just conflict in general when it comes into your life, what's your approach to handling it? It depends on what the nature of the, of the conflict is, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if, it's, if it's somebody coming to me with a problem, Mm -hmm. uh, my first reaction is, well, tell me what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Explain it to me. Mm -hmm. Give me the details. How are you seeing this situation? Mm -hmm. and, and I would try to draw from that person as much information as I could. Mm -hmm. and, and then I would say, well, I'm, you know, I don't know what the answer is, mm -hmm. but I would try to find an answer for you. And just try and kind of talk and, with them. And then I would try to find out, well, who are the people that I need to talk to mm -hmm. 
to bring this problem forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and of course, sometimes people will react extremely emotionally to a situation that's directly impacting them, mm -hmm. and they're not being objective. Right. And whereas if you give them some, if you give them an opportunity to ex fully explain themselves, that's a good way of getting people to refocus mm -hmm. and settle the emotional aspect of things if they can. Right. So kind of trying to get people to look at the big picture when they're when they're yeah, or or at least to at least to look at it with less personal stake involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so there's a lot of um, public input sessions, surveys, um, things like that coming out of City Hall um, in the past term. Do you feel um, satisfied with the amount of public input that Sarnians give to their council? And if not, is there anything that you feel you could improve upon? Well, I certainly appreciate the fact that there has been an increased emphasis on letting the public know that there is an opportunity to provide feedback on various issues and decisions that are coming to council. Mm -hmm. And I think that is true, that over the last four years, that has happened more frequently than in the previous four years. Mm -hmm. So that's an improvement. Mm -hmm. Now I know at the same time, sometimes staff bend over backwards in order to prepare information for the public, to set up a meeting for the public to come and speak to them, and nobody comes. Right. And you think, well, gee, you poor guys, you put all that work into that presentation, yeah. and I'm here, but I'm on the committee. How is that working? Right, right. And, and you think, well, okay, that's not a, that doesn't necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. it, it probably means that by and large, people are not, one would be tempted to say aware of the problem, but sometimes people are aware of the problem, but they just don't think there's anything more that needs to be done than what is being done. Mm -hmm. So it's often a vote of confidence in the fact that staff is in charge of the situation, they've got a program, mm -hmm. council is involved, things are moving along as they should. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, I guess final question about current council. Um, so, there's been a lot of changes over the last four years. Um, one of them, most notably, especially affecting some of our older citizens of Sarnia, is the removal of the paper ballots. Um, so, how do you feel about that change? Were you in support of the move um, to internet and telephone voting, or what are your thoughts on that? In regard to that particular issue, I know I was at that council meeting where the issue was discussed. And, and I came away from that meeting thinking to myself, well, that's fine. They're moving ahead with new ways of doing things, but people will still have the opportunity to use the paper ballot. Right. Obviously, I was among a large number of people who thought that the paper ballot was still an option. Mm -hmm. And I then we find out months lot. later, yeah. uh, gee, guys, you are not going to have a paper ballot. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do this all on your computer or on your phone. Mm -hmm. And, of course, people are upset. Mm -hmm. And... And then you hear the information, and assuming that it's all accurate, that, for instance, Chatham-Kent, also, of course, having their municipal election, and they're still maintaining a paper ballot along with the electronic ballot as well. Right. So, you know, why are we not doing that? Mm -hmm. And then we hear of other communities that experimented with the electronic voting and then said, sorry, we don't like it and we're not going to do it anymore. Right. And then there was just the provincial election just recently, mm -hmm. which was partially electronic. I mean, you went you went and marked your paper ballot, and then, of course, it was automatically scanned and counted. Right. And, of course, that was a system that the, you know, the city was using previously, too. Mm -hmm. You mark your paper ballot, then feed it into the machine, and away we go. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the just the element of surprise. Yes. We, we thought we would still get the paper in addition yeah. to the e-voting. Okay, fair enough. Um, so we'll move now into um, enough about that stuff. We'll go straight into you, your campaign, your um, issues that you're you're going to be uh, using on your platform. So first one for this section, um, most important issues that you think the city of Sarnia is facing. There will, be a, there will be a lot of individual issues that will be brought forward by candidates. All of them will be important to one degree or another. The problem that I have observed in previous campaigns is that there never seems to be an overriding vision of how these things should fit together or what is a dominant concern. In this last year, I think it was in the, at the May meeting of Council, a document was presented to Council showing the long-term predictions for population. 
this may seem like a pretty dry sort of subject, but the fact is population and population growth is absolutely key to everything that is going to happen in this community. Mm -hmm. If the population increases, well and good. It, it will enable us to move forward to keep to meet the increasing costs of, of inflation. We'll be able to have a, an expanding tax base mm -hmm. that will pay for the increases in salaries that we will have to pay, mm -hmm. that will deal with a very horrible infrastructure deficit that the city is facing. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are really material problems, mm -hmm. and they depend on population. Yes. Yeah. If population declines, mm -hmm. we're really up against it. Mm -hmm. And it's going the community will shrink, businesses will shrink, there'll be less and less opportunity. We will be a declining community. Mm -hmm. Someplace in the middle there's stasis. And we have been in that position in terms of population growth for the better part of a decade. And mm -hmm. a lot of people have said, no, 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 you can't say that, can't say that, don't, don't say that we're declining population, don't say that we're not growing, that'll scare people away, that'll scare investment away. It is true, though. Well, <laughs> it may be true, but if you don't face the fact, you're not going to help the situation either. Yeah, and exactly. I think this is, a, this is a fact we have to accept. I don't think it's negative, I think it's positive. You say, this is a community, we have this situation, for the last 10 years our population has been static, Mm -hmm. maybe growing a percent or a percent and a half over a year. The previous statistics, the previous statistics based on the census, suggested that there would be population decline. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, oh, no, 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 that's wrong. That can't possibly be right. It will never happen. Well, lo and behold, it happened. Mm -hmm. So here comes the new, the new interpretation of the census, mm -hmm. and they're suggesting the same thing. Right. There will be, there is a possibility that there will be further population decline. Well, if there is, that's in the future. Right now, we have to hold on to what we've got. We need to concentrate on making this as good a place to live as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. The city exists for us, first of all. We belong here. Mm -hmm. It's our city. We need to make it a good place for us. Right. Um, so, in terms of the population either remaining static or declining, any thoughts on how we can retain the people that we do have and retain our youth so that they they start families here, they keep families here? Well, you know, that's a, that's a sort of a chicken and egg problem because you, we have the college and we have students graduating. We have students who graduate through our high school systems and, and go on to universities and colleges out of town. Mm -hmm. We would like them all to come back and find jobs. Mm -hmm. They're not coming back and they're not staying if there aren't any jobs. Mm -hmm. How are we going to create those jobs? Mm -hmm. I don't think City Council can create jobs. City Council can support the effort to create jobs, mm -hmm. but that initiative really has to come from the business community. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where the growth needs to come. So if you, if you got the jobs, well obviously you'll find people sooner or later who will fill those jobs. Mm -hmm. And I find that interesting just recently reading through papers that a lot of employers across the province are finding that they have jobs, but they have no bodies to fill those jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know whether it's the kind of jobs that are available that is a problem. Uh, I've spoken to people here locally who would be well informed. Uh, I'm told that one particular uh, area of work in, the t in this city that is going short, mm -hmm. even though there are lots of openings, is, is uh, truck driving. Mm -hmm. And I would think there would be a number of young guys out there, or middle-aged guys out there, who got their license and would be quite capable of taking on that kind of a job. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, um, like you said, even just about public input meetings, that kind of stuff. Maybe it's just the lack of awareness of Well, of what's I, I sometimes think that that's very true, especially of uh, these sort of arm's length organizations that support economic growth, like uh, the Sarnia Lampton Economic Partnership, mm -hmm. uh, the Industrial Industrial Alliance. There's another word in there that I'm forgetting, but the uh, but there are these other organizations that do work with employment. Uh, there's the, there's the uh, Goodwill Industries mm -hmm. aspect that provide employment. There are, I know there are a couple of other agencies in town that also are dealing with employment. Mm -hmm. And they're all aware of certain jobs that do exist in the community mm -hmm. that are not being filled. Mm -hmm. So if, I mean, if that's actually a developing theme around the province and including here, mm -hmm. Surely there is an opportunity at the end. Surely that's that's the light in the window at the end of this thing. Right. Uh, you can see, okay, there are jobs, 
and sooner or later people will come to fill those jobs. Mm -hmm. um, a discouraging factor of all of this, though, is, is that over the last while, over 80% of all new growth in the province has gone to Toronto and the immediate Toronto yeah, area. Yeah. And the farther you are away from Toronto, the less likely you are to grow economically. Right, right. And there is, as one commentator said, it's just a profound population bleed from the, from the more distant counties into the Toronto area. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of the stick that we're at. Yeah, right. Toronto is, Toronto is the, I like to think of it as, <laughs> it, it's the tail that, that wags the dog. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's the whale that swallowed the province. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's fair too. Um, okay, we've got a couple minutes left. Um, I just want you to tell me a little bit more about your platform and what you're planning on campaigning on. I would say that my platform is basically very conservative, and I believe in I believe in the importance of adhering to the program that was followed for quite a number of years, but has been weakened recently. That is was, had a little tag attached to it as the fiscal fitness program, mm -hmm. where the emphasis was on city hall managing funds in such a way that we would establish that proper balance between uh, rising taxes, and rising costs and being able to maintain everything that we want to maintain. A very, very difficult balance to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, just think of our, our recent waste contract where it, the cost of waste collection is going to go be, over four years will decrease between 30 and 60%. Mm -hmm. How is that going to be paid for? Mm -hmm. It's going to be paid for by rising taxes. Right, right. And this is just a reality. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know anybody who can stop the taxes from rising. I can't do it. So I think we need to be very conservative, especially because we're in this very slow growth scenario. Mm -hmm. We have to be very, very careful and prudent with what projects we're undertaking, where the money is being spent. Mm -hmm. And I think that is maybe part of the underlying dissatisfaction with the whole situation around Centennial Park. Mm -hmm. It's the money and how the money kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and there was less, seemed to be less and less concrete result from it. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, people have been very upset by this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've heard. And I think we need. Yeah, well. I've also over over the my experience in volunteering, which I haven't mentioned to you prior to this, I've been involved in a lot of organizations that are concerned with the homelessness and poverty and that element in our society. Mm -hmm. And we have to be very cognizant that that is an important element in our community. Mm -hmm. We don't see it very often. It's not like Toronto where you're going to walk down Young Street and see people on every other hot air grate sleeping in the night. Mm -hmm. It's invisible in this town, mm -hmm. but it's present. There's a real yeah. need and it's important that we, uh, that we remain aware of it and that we are conscious of it and we need to be able to help those people. Mm -hmm. uh, some people will be drawing attention to the fact that there is an opioid crisis mm -hmm. in this community, as there seems to be all across North America. Mm -hmm. and, and this is compounding all of this difficulty in our society. Right. And how City Council deals with that, beyond me. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot we need of to be like supportive. Provincial, provincial we, issue too. We, yeah, and it's yeah. other authorities that have responsibility there. And I suppose the council's, council's interest is to promote those other agencies mm -hmm. to assist them and to make sure that they are aware. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I think it is, I would use the word shameful that that the Ministry of Health in this province has for so long delayed and delayed and delayed the request for funding and for permission to go ahead with the detox center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been years. Yeah, yeah, it's over a decade. Literally yeah, years. over a decade. It's you know, and there's still. I mean, everything apparently is set to go. The local authorities have presented the ministry with a list of sites where they would like to build. And the ministry is not responding. Mm -hmm. And this is just typical of how the Ministry of Health has been responding to this community and presumably others, but particularly in our case, to this community's needs for a treatment center to help with that problem. Yeah, yeah. Agree with you there for sure. Um, so we're just about out of time. Um, last question I have for you, and you can include your final message for the people with this answer as well. Uh, but my question is, I've not decided yet who I'm voting for, so why should I vote for you? Well, you should vote for me because I am a widely experienced person. I'm deeply involved in the community. I've made it, a, made it an important aspect of my life to be as fully informed about city council 
and city council's responsibilities and activities as I possibly could, I come away from many years of observation of city council thinking, you've had hard problems to deal with. I think you've by and large done your best. It's unfortunate when personality becomes involved and when emotions get engaged rather than reason. Mm -hmm. I'm a reasonable person. I think I can keep that distance in discussion and debate. I think I can be a voice of reason in carrying through policy. All right, great answer. So thanks again for coming today. Thank you. Uh, this has been Brian Trothan. He's running for a city councillor seat. Um, if you like what Brian has to say, certainly vote for him. Polls are open online October 11th through to October 22nd. And thank you so much for watching.